Hello everyone, this is Scarzig, and welcome back to another episode of Duelist. Today, we're going to be playing some Starhorn. I had uh, been posting on Twitter the other day about how I finally got around to listening to the Lore Codex, and Starhorn is a badass, and I was talking about how, like, you know, just what little information we have in the lore and what they give you from Starhorn. He's just such a cool character. And uh, it was suggested to me, you know, why don't you go ahead and play him? And that jogged my memory. I actually had an old, old Starhorn deck that I was working on. And so this is like the newer permutation of that deck. I tweaked it just a little bit. The new patch just dropped, but nothing major actually changed with this deck. So I'm really excited to hop right into it. We've got three Flash Reincarnation, three Amplification, three Azure Horn Shaman, three Healing Mystic, three Natural Selection, two Woodwen. This is a minion that you don't really see a lot. This is a two mana two two with Provoke, with the opening gambit to give another nearby friendly minion Provoke. And so what this allows us to do is, first off, we can turn the Azure Horn Shaman into a Provoke target. And then that makes it even harder for our opponent to play around it properly. We can also turn our Sunsteel Defender or the Spirit Harvest or any of our larger minions into Provoke units and lock down our opponent further. It's like having... Hmm. It's kind of like Old Lady Lock, right? Where you're able to generate a Provoke unit and then have additional Provokes on the board. Um, so it's really solid. I have two in the deck. And it's been working out really great for me, actually. Um, we've got three Young Silithars, of course, just to finish out our two drops for this deck. We've got three Earth Sisters. Um, again, these synergize well with Woodwen, forcing our opponent to attack them. You can also use Flash Reincarnation with Earth Sister, of course. You can get a two damage AoE, and then that combos with Amplification. Uh, amplification... Doesn't really work for Sunsteel Defender, but again, Flash Reincarnation into Sunsteel Defender is a staple Magmar combo. Really strong to bring this out on turn one. Uh, we've got Spirit Harvesters in the deck, which is uh, pretty interesting. The one damage ping synergizes with Earth Sister and Eclipse, where this is a minion that when it takes damage, it deals that much damage to the enemy general. So you have your Spirit Harvester on the board, pings the Eclipse, damages your opponent, Earth Sister damages your opponent. Um, the Spirit Harvester is going to help us keep Heart Seekers and small units like that under control. And this actually becomes a little bit stronger because Blistering Scorn was nerfed. Um, and plus the 5-5 five, five body is really enormous. If you need those pings, you can also flash it out and then maybe hit it with Amplification. All in all, really strong. I've been really digging Spirit Harvester lately because it fell out of the mana. It used to be really strong, and it just like kind of fell off as time went on. Um, another cool thing is when you have the Spirit Harvester and Azure Horn Shaman on the board together, the um, Spirit Harvester is putting the Azure Horn Shaman on that ticking time bomb aspect, and it might force your opponent to make some really, really suboptimal and crazy choices. And... One thing I want to mention while I'm looking at it now is I wasn't quite sure what I wanted to put in for Healing Mystic because it doesn't quite synergize with this deck, but every once in a while maybe you want to heal the Earth Sister or an Eclipse or a Spirit Harvester. Maybe something's been pinged down a bit bit too many times. Mechanter War Beast sometimes can get healed, so all in all really solid, and we're finishing it off, of course, with the Magmar staples of Mechanter War Beast and Mandrake. So, pretty fun um, mid-range Magmar deck. You can get some pretty broken outcomes, right? If um, your opponent isn't properly prepared for some of the stuff that you do to them, with Azure Horn Shaman especially. It's really good for threatening really, really massive amounts of value, and then can just bait removal from the opponent. Um, one other combo that's in this deck that I haven't talked about is you can actually use Flash Reincarnation on Woodwen. So you can use a two-card two combo to give a minion provoke if you have to, like for free. And that's come in handy for me for a few, a few times as well. And interestingly enough, um, to talk about the deck a little bit more... Starhorn's ability to draw cards is very useful for this deck as well because it's very you have to kind of flood 
to get maximum value out of the Azure Horn Shaman. And with Flash Reincarnation and like all the combos that we're doing, you're going to be running out of cards. So in this particular deck, uh, Sarhorn's Bloodborne spell is actually a bit more useful than Voth's. Uh, Voth lets you control the board, but I mean, because Spirit Harvester is going to be pinging stuff down, it makes it a bit more... It makes it a bit easier for us to trade into things with our general. So all in all, uh, really solid. Hey Tango, you were laying down and being good over there. So I wanted you to be able to stay in here with me while I record, so don't blow it. I hear you over there squeaking your toy. What is up with this, uh, wow, I don't think Q-Kind's ever been that long. Ooh, okay, so we've got, uh, Songhai here in our first match, and this is... This video is right after the most recent patch, so this will be a post-nerf Riva game. We'll see how this goes. I think I do want to uh, hold the natural selection in case he develops like a Katara first, then I can go two drop into natural selection. Um, just really solid removal spell, and I'll hold the Spirit Harvester as well. A uh, crazy forbidden combo we can do is natural selection our own Azure Horn Shaman. If we, if we happen to have a really strong board, then we can just uh, do that four mana combo, give them all a bunch of HP. Not something I've had to do yet, but it is a possibility that I did think of when I put it in the deck. Yep, so there's the Katara. I'm just going to walk forward, put down the young Silithar, and then just develop this natural selection. Um, do I want to replace the other young Silithar? Yeah, we'll, we'll hold this, because we had to play our 2-drop on the mana tile in order to get that uh, clear. We couldn't play, you know, double 2-drop to threaten walking onto the tile. And then we'd be able to ramp up to 5, play the Spirit Harvester, and then go from there. Um, so this way, we're just able to have a double 2-drop to follow up on a 4-mana turn. Ooh, so we've got uh, Amplification here now. To throw onto the young Silithar. So we're going to do that right now. We're going to do Azure Horn Shaman, Young Silithar, Amplification, and we're going to one shot this Lantern Fox. He gets the uh, Phoenix Fire, which will allow him to deal with this young Silithar quite easily, but the thing is, is he'll need, he won't be able to walk onto the mana to do that. He needs to attack the egg that will be left over. And then we get to threaten this for free. If he develops the Arcane Heart, he's probably not going to be expecting the Spirit Harvester. Oh, Chakri Avatar, that's pretty solid. Okay, yep, so Phoenix Fire. Takes out the egg. Hmm. I wonder, I probably could have gotten away with going face... And then he would have just attacked with the Lantern Fox and done the same play, but I would have got damage in. Who knows? Because if you leave a body up like that, there's a chance he could have maybe hit that Lantern Fox with a Killing Edge. And because Killing Edge gives extra HP, they have a chance to get more, um, what is it? More Phoenix Fires, and that's just no good. So we are going to step up like this. And play the Spirit Harvester. So the ping is going to kill the Heart Seeker. The Azure Horn Shaman, I'm going to attack. And then the ping will leave it at 1 HP. So that threatens, right? That, that threatens that time bomb scenario. And do I want to attack? Yeah, I'll attack the Chakri Avatar to start getting it softened up. So what this does, it makes it a 3-1. And so it'll die to whatever it decides to attack unless she plays a couple spells to buff it up. And so I really like this board state, because now she has to worry about the Spirit Harvester and this young Silithar getting buffed by the Azure Horn Shaman, and the Chakri Avatar, I mean, is, is secondary at this point. Mirror Meld, Onyx Bear Seal, that's solid. Hmm really unfortunate. So now we've got these two Chakri Avatars bullying us. Okay, so what's interesting about this play is I can now 
um, play the Sunsteel Defender, and it's guaranteed to get buffed by the Azurhorn Shaman. I can make this trade over here into the Chakri Avatar. Um, I think it's prudent for me to just draw a card here, because I think I want to save the Egg Morph. Should I replace the Egg Morph? Because it feels kind of slow, and there's a chance I could get a 2-drop, and then, hmm, just go from there. Because if I get a Woodwind, then I can provoke the Pando, so I think I'm going to go for that just because it's a blowout. Natural Selection, ah, terrible shame there. Okay, so, I guess we'll just step down, swing the Azure Horn Shaman up like this. Play the Sunsteel Defender, make the trade, draw. We're going to try to at least keep him boxed in. Mechanter Warbeast is solid. And I'm not going to attack here, I want to keep my HP up. One thing that I would like to have in this deck, and that I used to have in this deck, was Earth Spheres. But they kind of got cut along the way. It's sort of hard to make room for them. Maybe I could cut an Earth Sister or something to slip one in. But you really only need Earth Spheres in the Songhai matchup because they have so much out of hand damage. But you see, I, I have a really nice surround here. Mmm, so that's two Onyx Bear Seals. This increases my chances of getting a Woodwind. Because if I can give this Provoke, since ba Bando can't be attacked, it just sits there and locks them down for eternity. Ah, oh, man. Another thing I've done is uh, use Spear Harvester to ping Pandos and then hit them with Amplification. And the Pandos really screw over my natural selection. That's super unfortunate. And I can't leave the Chakri Avatar alive, but at the same time, I, I have to play the Mechanter Warbeast, and it would just be a, a straight trade, and that feels super bad. Like, I could attack, and then that just leaves me in such a bad state. Because if I take that 6 damage, that leaves me at 5, and that's like, I die to anything. So I think that in order to save my own life... I need to just do this. But again, that feels so bad. Hmm. Yeah, I'm going to keep the uh, young Silithar up, so it makes it a bit harder for him to deal with it. But yeah, I mean, this matchup is still pretty difficult, so I'm not too worried. Every once in a while, you get some crack draws, right, and that'll win you the game. Because if I would have pulled a Woodwind to put on these Pandos, I probably wouldn't worry about the uh, Chakri Avatar so much. But Reva has the ability to lay down these multi-threats, right? Because now we've got Lantern Fox Inner Focus. I take two, plus one, and then uh, no, not enough mana for the um, Phoenix Fire, luckily. don't need this amplification now. Not really. It's kind of slow, right? Because I could save it for next turn and have like a really bulky Mandrake. But right now we're in pretty dire straits. So I want a Mechanter War Beast to play down here and clear this out. Ugh. Really unfortunate. Fortunately, I don't need to attack into the Lantern Fox. Um, I can just do this and probably play like that and we're just gonna we're just gonna run away 
the Spirit Harvester will kill both of these. So now I have like a crazy board state, but my opponent has a full hand, eight mana, and a four wins Magi up. So this is like pretty, pretty devastating. So that's one damage. And then probably Mist Dragon Seal, Killing Edge on the four wins, and then I just die, right? I tried to create as much distance as I could to avoid, like, Tusk Boar stuff. Four damage, Phoenix Fire. Ooh, man, this is... If he doesn't... If he's not getting ready to kill me right now, then... Oh, man, three Phoenix Fires. There you go. Lantern Foxes, man. Four wins. I couldn't... Couldn't deal with it. Needed that Mechanter War Beast, unfortunately. So, Ugh. not off to a good start, but I mean, sometimes you just get outdrawn. We're gonna go right back in. Ooh, this is actually my first Magmar Mirror with this deck. No, wait, that's a lie. I did play one game earlier against Voth. I played a bunch of games with this deck before the patch dropped, and um, so it was pretty interesting to see uh, post patch song high they still do the same thing to you the the nerf helps a little bit but she still does the same thing um they just made it a bit more difficult that's kind of what i don't like so we can open up with i'm going to replace the two amplification to try to get a flash reincarnation for the sun steel mm, didn't get it although natural selection is kind of nice i'm going to open up with the azure horn shaman here and so next turn, I can walk onto the mana and develop the Sunsteel. This is going to be a pretty passive opening. Okay, so so just double two drop then? Or, oh wow, I thought he was going to go two drop into natural selection. But he just denied the center mana so that I couldn't take it. That's really good for us that he wasn't able to use that efficiently. I'm going to replace one natural selection... Ooh, Woodwind. See, this is where we get into some shenanigans. So instead of developing the Sunsteel here, especially since he had sort of a weak turn, I'm just going to do, uh, yeah, Young Silithar here, and then Woodwind onto the uh, Azure Horn Shaman. I think what would have been a little bit better is to just walk the Azure Horn Shaman past the Mana Tile, actually, and play the minions directly on it. I had sort of made that move and then replaced. I didn't think my turn all the way through. So, slight misplay. It would have ended up with the Azure Horn Shaman being in a bit more of a forward position, provoking both of them. But this way, I can just bring the Azure Horn Shaman up into the fight. If he summons something that has, you know, 4 HP, then I can just trade into it with the Azure Horn Shaman. This is another reason this ca this uh, card, I've been kind of digging it again lately, because I used to play it back in the day. I've been digging this card again. You see, like, Earth Sister. See, the Azure Horn Shaman, I can just trade into that and then buff all of my stuff. Because of Earth Sister's effect, she deals her damage to all nearby enemies. So, yeah, I can just get mega value here. We can bring the young Silithar down in a way, summon the Sunsteel Defender like this, and then I can step away from the Earth Sister so I don't take that AoE damage, take out the Healing Mystic, the Azure Horn Shaman trades in, boom, we have massive uh, stuff going on here, and let's see. Because she's still threatening with her AoE, I think I'm going to bring the Woodwind back here. So that way I have a, a Provoker chilling. And, yeah, so we potentially have a lot of value. Um, Magmar does run Plasma Storm, so he can just clear everything but Sunsteel Defender if he wants to. But, I mean, a 4-7 with Force Field is, is pretty spooky right now. He'll need to use an Egg Morph on this. That's one of Magmar's only removals. So I'll have to hit this with Egg Morph or, Egg Morph or Thumping Wave. And so it looks like what he's going to do is take the 4 damage from the Sun Steel. So that the Earth Sister hits the Sun Steel. Okay. What you got, boy? 
Oh, War Beast. Not bad. Flash War Beast. I wasn't even thinking about that. So good play on my opponent there. Because I wanted to avoid the Earth Sister AoE, and then he hit me with Mechanter AoE. So now Earth Sister can uh, finish off the Sunsteel Defender. And then the Earth Sister's effect turns the Young Silithar into an egg. There we go. So really strong turn from our opponent there. But he's down to um, three cards in hand. He's going to draw, so we'll be at four. And our young Silithar hatches. We still have our Provoke, so this is nice. We can heal the Woodwind. Two, we can potentially um, maybe get an Amplification for this bad boy. Hmm, but let's see how I want to do this. Flash Reincarnation. Hmm, so I can actually Flash Spirit Harvester and then summon Woodwind to give it provoke or actually I'll, I'll flash spirit harvester healing mystic to heal it and then seeking eye hmm that seems like really like circuitous and greedy to go about that that route because he's going to be coming up on six mana so there's a chance he could just have another mechanter war beast um so i think what i'll do is just come around with the Hmm. Yeah, we're just going to do this. Do I want to attack here? Nah. We're going to force him to attack. Because the thing about the Spear Harvester is it controls the board, but again, it's just a really strong 5-5 five, five body. Another interesting card you could probably find room for in this deck is Twin Fang, since I'm running three Spear Harvesters. But very rarely do I have, like, a crazy board like that. And, you know, Blistering Scorn isn't as prominent to, you know, give you that burst right? It's like, it would be super slow to rely on Spirit Harvester to give you Twin Fang procs, so maybe not worth it, but something to think about. Yep, so we force him to stay in place to kill the Woodwind, so that denies him walking out of the way and then using Mechanter War Beast here. Um, at this point, you can see I have uh, pretty decent uh, mana here, so we're just going to use the Egg Morph and I don't need to attack the egg. I can let Spirit Harvester kill it at the end of the turn. So that's pretty good for us. The young Silithar, however, is kind of in a bad spot because I can't... <laughs> if I attack, he'll turn into an egg and then the, young, the Spirit Harvester kills the egg. So I guess what we will do here is just attack. And do we want to heal or do we want to woodwind? We're going to woodwind our uh, Spirit Harvester. And you know what? I am going to go in on this damage here. Because now that he's got the uh, woodwind and the Spirit Harvester provoking him, you see this this damage is going to go go off. He needs to make a choice now. He has to find a way to, to finish off both of these units. I played the woodwind here so that he can't get a good Mechanter War Beast. He can summon up here and then swing around to hit me in the Spirit Harvester, but he still needs to take that damage. And now that I'm slowly whittling him down... Ooh, Natural Selection, not bad. So I'm slowly whittling him down. Um, this deck could maybe use a little bit of out-of-hand damage, but I kind of like playing to the old-school Magmar strength of just getting such a crazy strong board of fat guys that your opponent can no longer deal. So we're at 7. I can natural selection the young Silithar here. Um, attack the healing mystic. And then summon the spirit harvester to finish off his board. This is extraordinarily risky for me being at 10 HP because he's got overload stacks. And if one of his cards is say, you know, founded life force, he can kill me. 
or um, Mechanter War Beast plus a buff of some kind maybe do some damage to me. Ooh. So he's he's building a wall. He's afraid. I like that. We're going to replace the Young Silithar. Mechanter War Beast, perfect. Let's see. Yeah, because I can swing around, hit him. Then I can kill the egg with my general. That brings the Spirit Harvester into range to finish him off. Well played. So we had to take a risk there. Um, well, we didn't have to. I wanted to clear my opponent's board to seal the victory. Um, the patch just dropped. The client's been having a little bit of issue saving your games after you win or lose. It just, it still saves them, but the pro the progress <laughs> records. Wow, what was that? Oh, she's chewing on the little thing over there. Just got caught in her throat. Be careful, Tango. I don't want to do puffer Heimlich maneuver on you. But yeah, I mean, I've been really enjoying this deck. The other night when I managed to play Woodwind on a Pando that my opponent had transformed was just absolutely hilarious. Um, we're going to replace... Oh my god. I think what we'll do is flash Earth Sister turn 1 and then turn 2 play Amplification on it. That's probably going to be our best bet. We'll replace the Eclipse. And... It's like I... My gut's telling me to hold on to Mechanter War Beast, right? Because it's such a good card, it's such a good bomb. But I think that it would just be too slow with this setup. Because if I flash Earth Sister and then he kills it, and then, you know, it ruins my scheme of playing Amplification on it, I just get screwed over. So, in order to stop that from happening, I'm going to replace both of these and just hope the Mechanter War Beast comes back to me when I need it the most. Pardon me. Um, we'll replace Flash. There was a chance maybe we get a Sunsteal there, because I'd feel more comfortable doing Flash Sunsteal. Do I want to actually just go Azure Horn Shaman instead? Yeah, I think we'll just go Azure Horn Shaman, truth be told. Because we can do our thing where Azure Horn Shaman ramps up to four and we play the Earth Sister and then it makes it awkward for him because Azure Horn Shaman being at four HP will just straight up get one shot by a Windblade Adept. Silver Guard Knight really doesn't want to hit it. Yeah, see, so I can move on to... Wow, he's gonna... Wow. Okay. Um, hell, I could even flash out an Eclipse. That sounds like a really good idea. Oh my god, hang on. If I move the Azure Horn Shaman down here, flash out an Eclipse onto the Mana Tile, I can hit it with Amplification. Yikes. And we'll replace the other, because... Well, why... Should I? Just so that I can have, you know, peace of mind. Yeah, we'll replace this just so that we can continue to build options into our hand in case he has, like, um, Sunbloom. Because when I see plays like this, I get, like, I start, I start salivating. I just see, like, the potential to destroy my opponent, but then you normally wouldn't take a play like this because Sunbloom just hurts really bad. This would just drop this down to a 3-5 and then I lose out on its bonus effect. So Silver Guard Knight retreats. He's at 5 mana. The other thing too is that Lionar, he'll have to like hit this with Martyrdom or something. Normally to take out big threats, Argeon needs to do damage, right? Yeah, so check this out. Eclipse does the deals the ping, the Holy Immolation. He gets to sidestep the Azure Horn Shaman with this play, so that's really solid, but the four damage this takes also deals the damage to him. Had I not replaced that, um, <laughs> that amplification, I would just play the amplification to go, here you go, buddy. Go ahead and hold this. Um, we're coming up on, okay, so we're going to replace other Eclipse, because my hand's getting pretty heavy. And, yeah, so we'll 
kill this Azure Horn. Excuse me, we'll kill the um, Flood Tier. Eclipse comes up to one shot the Silver Guard Knight. And then, do I just want to play Earth Sister? Or Azure Horn Shaman draw a card? Hmm. I think Earth Sister. Because this will this will force him to do another uh holy immolation play. And if he does that, he'll take another four damage. Eclipse is for certain factions, it's a nightmare to deal with. This is actually really shitty by me, because I get blown out by Sunbloom again. I should have played the Earth Sister like down and away. Yeah, so he's going to do another Holy Immolation play. Yeah, so again, my fault for playing into that. But now he's down to two cards. I'm just going to deny him. I'm not going to cast Seeking Eye. Which is one of the reasons that car, the um, that power just feels so bad, right? Is because... You end up helping your opponent out. So now I've got, you know, a 5-5 five, five on the board. If he plays a Provoke, then... Oh, okay. So he's got another option. We're, we're, we're taking, like, all of the options out of this guy. Got him in the corner. Do I care about Windblade Adept? What would be really nice here is to replace into... Uh, ooh, Natural Selection. That'll do. Hmm. I think it's better for me to just not draw him a card. Because I got him on the ropes. It's just that my hand is really bad too. Sunsteel. That makes it a little bit better. Um, so we're just going to keep him bottled up. We've got the Egg Morph to deal with anything really troublesome that he drops. Hmm. I was going to egg morph this, but I'm actually going to egg morph the Sojourner. Ooh, natural selection. Hmm. I can Sunsteel Defender and then natural selection my own Azure Horn Shaman, but that, that actually feels really bad. So, yeah, we'll just, we'll just natural selection the Sojourner. We don't want him to draw any cards. We're going to come down like this. Nine HP is pretty spooky. I probably shouldn't have attacked there. I've been like, <laughs> I've been like so bloodthirsty with this deck, and this is like not the way you play it. But for some reason, like playing Starhorn makes me want to go so ham. So if you're if you really want to try out this deck, take my advice and chill. Just chill out. I think that honestly, I could play this deck a lot slower than I have been, and just let. Oh, see, so Arclight Sentinel is going to kill the Azure Horn Shaman. Sunsteel Defender gets boosted. He can just run away. Pulsar Beast. Oh no! So it begins! Oh, but he's at 4 HP. So he needs to run this way. What are you doing, man? Don't, don't run that way! What are you doing? Do you have a Provoke? Dude! Saber Spine Tiger? You've only got one mana! That's Scallywag! You think I'm gonna go for the draw? Okay, hang on a second. Boy, if you don't think I'm gonna just draw this Mechanter War Beast right now. Spear Harvester, okay. That's not what I want. Um, we want. Mechanter War Beast. What, what? Okay, seriously though? 
Fine. I appreciate him going for the draw like that. I won't hate. I won't hate. Because honestly, I played that like... I played that game like shit. <laughs> honestly. Like, I played into like a bunch of holy immolations and stuff. But Eclipse got major value, so that was pretty hilarious. Um, but yeah, I think that's all the time we have for today. Uh, again, really fun deck. I probably didn't do it justice, but I just have been playing it all day. <laughs> and I finally actually, you know, got everything organized throughout the day so that I could actually sit down and record. And thank you for joining me today. I'll see you next time, and you have a good one.